Can a simple data graph set off alarm bells at one of F1's most legendary teams? What has Ferrari seen in Hamilton's telemetry in Las Vegas that they haven't seen all season? Hamilton's disappointment when he got out of the car was not a temporary emotional reaction. It was confirmation that what I had felt throughout the session was not paranoia or bad luck, but a profound misconception. His words made it clear, a meaningless race. Not because he hadn't fought, but because he never had a tool in his hands that he could truly compete with. And that, for a driver of his caliber, is more frustrating than any retirement. Las Vegas was more than a race. It was the most uncomfortable mirror that Ferrari has had in front of it in years. And now, with everyone watching, they must decide what to do with what that mirror reflects. Modern F1 is no longer one with instinct, is one with data. And in Las Vegas, that data told story far more chilling than any final result. Hamilton's telemetry, once broken down with technical coldness by Ferrari engineers, showed patterns that were not only anomalous, they were unacceptable for a team that even aspires to be competitive. The first alarm arose in the slow traction areas. In theory, Hamilton and Leclerc shared a setup optimized for the circuit. Same fuel load, same engine maps. However, while Leclerc managed to maintain starting traction in technical sectors, Hamilton's car seemed to lose grip just at the moment where millimeter precision is needed. At each low-speed acceleration, the sensors showed unexpected slippage of the rear axle, a behavior that not only reduces the exit speed, but compromises the entire rhythm of the following sector. The most disturbing thing is that this deficit did not correspond to any logical external variable. The car should be predictable, but it wasn't. And what was initially interpreted as a possible difference in driving style was soon ruled out when comparing the corrections that Hamilton made with the steering wheel and the brake pedal pressure records. The telemetry showed peaks of micro-blocking, areas where the car not only did not brake with stability, but also forced the driver to constantly correct to avoid losing the line. This type of behavior, more typical of a poorly balanced car in pre-season, should not have appeared in the final qualifying phase. The next piece of the puzzle was thermal. And this is where the analysis becomes even more interesting. On a fast lap, every degree of tire temperature counts. And in this case, the SF25's frontal telemetry showed alarming behavior. At the beginning of the turn, the front tires were below the ideal operating window. That means understeer when entering corners, lack of response from the front axle, and most critically, the inability to aggressively use the curbs or attack the later braking points. For a driver like Hamilton, this is not just an inconvenience is an absolute technical limitation. But the car's real collapse came after a seemingly minor incident, contact with a boundary cone. What any other car might have absorbed as a superficial disturbance in the SF-25 was a technical ruling. The momentary loss of aerodynamic flow in the lower part of the car altered the behavior of the diffuser. And this, in turn, caused an immediate destabilization of the rear axle. The downforce disappeared just when it was needed most, under full acceleration after hard braking. The car literally stopped behaving as it had been designed. And with that, the entire comeback strategy was nullified. From that moment on, the progressive warm-up system for the tires that was key to getting into a competitive rhythm was interrupted. The car, without the correct load, could not generate the necessary friction to raise the tires to the proper temperature. Result, widespread loss of grip, loss of confidence, and loss of any real chance of setting a competitive time. What the telemetry confirmed, then, was not a piloting error. It was confirmation that the SF25 has such a narrow operating window that any slight deviation from a cone, a gust of wind, a late braking can trigger a complete collapse of performance. A car that needs perfect conditions to perform at its best is not a championship car. It's a rolling risk. And that risk in Las Vegas was taken by Lewis Hamilton. Not as a star driver, but as an uncomfortable witness to a conceptual failure that Ferrari can no longer ignore. An atmosphere of tension was established inside Scuderia Ferrari that transcends the technical. When Lewis Hamilton's telemetry data pointed to a collapse in the car's performance, it wasn't just a chassis or tire problem. It became a matter of trust, cohesion, and team culture. Hamilton, accustomed to operating in the elite with narrow margins, found himself with a machine that did not respond and with a structure that was slow to recognize it as a symptom rather than an isolated incident. His own statements make it clear. It was not just that the car did not work, but that he, as a driver, was forced to perform miracles, which in his phrase, is unsustainable for someone of his caliber. The psychological impact on Hamilton was profound. 
Coming to a team with as much history as Ferrari means assuming enormous expectations. But when the car doesn't perform in communication with the wall, the engineers, and the rest of the organization suffers, what remains is an erosion of morale. Hamilton confessed that there are times when he feels like he is rolling pointlessly not because he lacks dedication, but because the tool does not allow him to compete. And at Ferrari, that feeling resonated deeply. Seeing a driver with seven titles, accustomed to fighting at the front, struggling to extract tents that previously seemed trivial, made it clear that the problem was not only technical, but cultural. The team's self-image took a hit. Internally in the Maranello pit, the consequences were multiple. Technical decisions put under scrutiny, lines of responsibility questioned, and renewed attention to the flow of pilot engineer information that perhaps for too long was taken for granted. Hamilton provided detailed documents with suggestions on engines, suspensions, steering adjustments, and structural collaboration with the factory. This generated a latent tension. Was Ferrari prepared to accept that its new signing not only drove, but with his technical experience demanded profound changes? That dynamic, in an environment as hierarchical as Ferrari, adds layers of complexity to the challenge. The strategic challenge for the future is clear, although not easy. Ferrari must redefine its path. It is not enough to introduce new parts or make patches to the car. You must rethink the way you integrate the experienced pilot, how you translate sensations into actions, how you coordinate communication between the factory, track engineers, data analysis, and pilot. Furthermore, it must reconcile the aspiration to regain competitiveness with the urgent need for operational stability, fewer technical surprises, less car behavior that depends on perfect conditions, and more consistency in each weekend. Only in this way can he give Hamilton the tool he needs and give the team a line of action that goes beyond reacting race by race. Therefore, what was experienced in Las Vegas was not just another episode of bad fortune. It was a turning point for Ferrari, an internal warning that resonates like, we can't continue like this anymore. The organization must now decide whether to enter rapid recovery mode or whether to take advantage of the setback to build something more sustainable. And Hamilton, for his part, faces a challenge that is as personal as it is collective, rebuilding himself in an environment that was never simple, but that today demands the best from him, even when the machine he works with is far from representing it. Telemetry doesn't lie. What emerged from the data from the weekend in Las Vegas has been installed as an inevitable mirror for Scuderia Ferrari, revealing with brutal clarity a series of shortcomings that were already perceived, but never so exposed. The numbers sent by the sensors of the car in the hands of Lewis Hamilton acted as an X-ray of a technical and operational philosophy that is in question today. Because when a driver who has won seven world championships cannot find the minimum symbiosis between himself and the car, the diagnosis is unappealable, the tool and the organization around him are not up to par. Ultimately, what happened in Las Vegas is not just a disappointing result is a wake-up call for all drivers, engineers, managers, and fans. If the car does not respond, it is not about blaming a condition. It is about asking what in the conception, development, communication, or strategy is failing. Ferrari has had moments of glory based on technical myths, on faith in moving forward. Today, that myth faces the cold reality of Hamilton's data and telemetry. And the challenge now is to transform that reality into a new competitive, realistic, and sustainable project. The neon lights of Las Vegas enveloped the Formula One paddock in an atmosphere of spectacle, excess, and latent tension. It was the type of race that everyone expected for its glamour and drama, but what no one anticipated was that, among all the noise and show, the true protagonist of the weekend was going to be a silent and clinical document, Lewis Hamilton's telemetry. Not an overtake, not an accident, not even a spectacular result. What set off alarm bells at Ferrari were the cold, hard, and revealing data that revealed the most vulnerable side of the SF-25. And that setback came in the form of a track cone. A light, almost invisible touch altered the airflow under the car, destabilized the diffuser, and completely ruined the qualifying lap. From there, the car became unpredictable, the tires did not reach their ideal temperature, and the balance was broken. For any team, this could be a technical note in the race post-mortem. For Ferrari, it was a painful revelation. Its car depends on such a fragile balance that any slightest disturbance leaves it defenseless. But the most important thing was not what Hamilton felt, but what his telemetry revealed. The data captured during that stint not only confirmed suspicions about the SF-25's volatility, but also exposed the car's limitations with mathematical clarity. 
For the first time, Ferrari had in front of it a complete and unfiltered reading of its greatest weakness, the impossibility of chaining a competitive weekend if perfect conditions do not exist. And the most ironic thing is that, without intending to, Hamilton became Ferrari's mirror. A driver who has won everything, facing a car that does not even allow him to compete. In that brutal contrast between the intact talent and the defective tool, the silent drama of the Las Vegas Grand Prix was condensed. A drama without fanfare, but with profound consequences. Let me know in the comments what you think about all this.